Hey everyone, welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 73. My name is Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. As you can see, Kathy is not here today, but the show still goes on. Still have a show to do, and that's why I'm here for you guys. So uh, what's going on today? Well, I have a couple of product and gear things to talk about later on in the show. Got a couple questions about uh, Lightroom and shooting level photos and printing directly from your Epson scanner. I had a question, somebody sent over a question about that. I'm gonna answer all of those. First though, I wanted to bring, uh, take note of the photo here by Steven Snow. He was the winner of the photo assignment, the nature assignment that we had finally announced the winners last week. So that is his winning print and I'll be shipping that out to him this week. It was printed on the Epson 3880 on the uh, cold press bright paper. Um, I thought it looked a little bit better with a little bit less texture or would look better with a little bit less texture. I didn't think it needed that extra texture that it was such a, an awesome photo that I didn't think it needed it. Uh, but it really looks awesome and stands out very well on the super nice exhibition uh, matte paper that Epson sent over. So very happy with the way that that print turned out. And once again, Stephen, uh, congratulations on winning that uh, assignment. We're probably going to have a new one coming up next week. Speaking of assignments, I also need you guys to send me over some questions for Epson. Uh, we're working on a blog post and maybe even something else to do with them, but I need a list of really good questions for Epson. So that is our question of the week is, what do you want to know from Epson? Give me any kind of a question. I'm going to send them all over to them. Don't hold back. Give me anything and everything, and I'll let them call through them. So please send them over. Um, I think it's going to be mainly directed towards printers, but uh, I don't see why we couldn't get, you know, questions about scanners or um, projectors or stuff like that. It probably can't hurt to ask them because I'm sure that they're going to end up being able to use those questions in other places. And I might be able to use them here on the show or get them answered for you here on the show. So don't hold back. Give me any kind of a question for Epson and uh, I'll get them in. And hopefully we can get that blog post up on Epson site and you'll see those answers over there. And of course, I'll mention them here on the show again. So last week was Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference or WWDC. And there was some really interesting things that are coming out for the new iPad and Apple operating system. The new one, at least on the Mac, is concerned is called Yosemite, which is pretty predictable. You know, it's the biggest uh, area, you know, out west as far as scenic places. And, you know, went from, I'm surprised it didn't start with Yosemite, to be totally honest, but it is what it is. So, they have some new stuff. And why am I talking about this? Because it's photography oriented and that's what matters here on the show. There's some big stuff that they're doing. Number one, with their editing. They did. Uh, they have some new filters that they're adding and some new editing and things you can do inside of the new apps in iOS 8 and also inside of Yosemite and the new iPhoto, that kind of thing. Basically, the developer conference tells you about what stuff is coming up software-wise and then in September, October, somewhere in that time frame, they announced the new devices, the new, the actual uh, new iPhone or iPad or maybe laptops, that kind of thing. That's kind of how it works. So, number one, non-destructive edits. I thought was going to be really cool. Basically, the same way we work inside of Lightroom. They're going to, as you're editing those images, you're always going to be able to back out and and go back to the original image. That's really cool. Obviously, that's editing on a on the computer or inside of the your iPhone, your iPad, basically those are gonna be non-destructive. Um, camera APIs, opening those up, basically we're gonna have a lot more control over our images through exposure, white balance, and focus. We're gonna be able to finally manual focus, manual white balance, and manually set our exposure inside of an iPhone. This is going to be interesting. I think it's finally going to take our small little camera that has been super controlled and turn it into something that we can finally use. 
it always seems like I'm good. I, I, I pick up my, take my phone out and I take a picture and I look at it, it's like, eh, exposure's wrong. Because the sky's too bright and the, you know, it, it always seems like it's, it's totally wrong and I can't adjust it, I can't do anything with it. It's not like I could even point it down with my camera and lock my exposure and then, you know, recompose. Just didn't, just didn't work, it's not possible with the phone. Finally, we're able to control that and it works really well. Uh, some of their enhancements and their editing, it's actually pretty surprised in their demo. Obviously, demos can be deceiving sometimes, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, other things that they're going to be able to do inside of the PhotoKit API uh, is read and write to the library. And there's also some interesting things that are coming out with uh, regards to iCloud photos. I'm actually trying to find an easy way to um, publish my photos from Lightroom to my iPad or iPhone so that I have them synced across all of my devices. I'm working on a, a nice, easy way to do that. Right now, Lightroom Mobile doesn't work because I have multiple catalogs. It only works for, the iPad app only works for one device, and obviously that's only going to be on the iPad. Uh, I should say one catalog and the iPad. It's not going to show me those on the iPhone. So, you know, I find times where maybe I'll have bad service or the Flickr app might be a little slow. So I want, I want to have the photos directly on my device. And I know there's a ton of apps that do that, but um, sometimes it's easier just to go with the native app. So I'm working on a nice, easy way. And I'm hoping with this new iCloud uh, APIs and the things that they're allowing to do, that it'll be interesting and give us some new stuff and some new methods and new ways to, to publish our photos over to our devices. Because basically, if you, if you want to show someone a photo, Whatever screen you have in front of you is the one you're going to show it on, whether it's an iPad, whether it's a computer, whether it's just a phone, that's the one that's going to work. So, um, yeah, if you do want to watch that, uh, I'll put up a link to the uh, Apple event. You can actually watch that anytime right on, I guess it's only an Apple device or only Safari. I'm not positive on that, but um, you can head over there. You can watch that. Uh, video and learn all about it, see all the good stuff. And uh, so yeah, check that out. Some other things that happened this week. Um, I was actually, I tweeted about this on Saturday, I guess it was. Was it Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. Basically, I was asked by someone at a, that uh, coaches a local soccer team for, I think they're, uh, their first graders or second graders, something like that, to come out and do some video of one of their games, or actually two of their games. And uh, I told him, I said, look, I don't, you know, I'm mainly a photographer. I only do a little bit of video, obviously, for, for here and myself. But I said, why not? I'll try it, you know? And it's interesting how, you know, kind of stepping out of your comfort zone really was difficult in some ways, but in other ways it was relatively easy. Um, the footage turned out pretty well for what he was, for what he's looking for, looking to do. And so we'll be able to get some really, really awesome short clips, which is what he wants. He wants those short little clips to be able to put in, uh, to a longer show. And he's going to do all the editing and post-production, that kind of thing. Um, where I'm getting, what I'm getting to here is basically having the right tool for the job. I had shot that first game on Wednesday night and I used one of my tripods with a ball head on it. Uh, it wasn't quite right. And the reason was, is it uh, with a ball head, it works okay for a pan, but you still need to be able to go up and down. You need, you know, cause uh, as kids get closer, you need to be able to tilt down as they get farther away. You might need to tilt up and then turn. So when you're moving with that ball head and it's that constant video, you have a tendency to lean and that leaning didn't work out very well. Uh, it, it was easily correctable inside a post, wouldn't necessarily be an issue for final image quality, especially since we're talking about, a, you know, short clips, 10, 15 second clips, maybe 20 second clips, plenty of, uh, of really usable footage it can be easily adjusted if needed to, but I'd rather do the right, do it the right way. So what I ended up doing is picking up a new head and I wish I knew the model number. I'll look that up for you and list it here, uh, from Manfrotto. Got a new video head and it is super, super smooth. I'll shoot a couple of test shots for you to show how, show you how smooth it is with this thing. Wow. 
it has a really nice pan. It has a really nice turn. I, I was really surprised at how nice it was and what a huge difference it is going from just a, you know, a ball head or a three-way head when shooting video to a real video head. And um, now after playing with this head, I may actually end up upgrading my legs too because it doesn't automatically level. And they make a, they make a set of legs that from Manfrotto or a lot of other video uh, tripods, they have a set of legs that will kind of automatically or much more easily level themselves because you expect to see that level video so basically what I'm point is having the right tool for the job and don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Make sure you set the right expectations as far as the quality of the work when you're giving it to the person. And if you're, if you're afraid that you can't deliver well or deliver the right product for them, tell them up front. Don't be afraid to do that. And um, I think you'll end up uh, doing some, some good stuff and just try it out. But sometimes you need to step up buy the right gear that's what i did with this head and no matter what if i get another set of legs i can always put this head on those other legs so it's going to work out just fine it was like 140 dollars something like that from amazon so uh so far i have it on this really probably 15 20 year old tripod that i'm actually staring at it right now because the camera's setting on it um from antonelli i actually got it from them when they were clearing out some gear so the, the legs work really good nice and heavy uh, I just need to figure out how to, uh, to get more level, and in order to do that, I need to upgrade the legs. So that'll be my next piece of video gear that I need. I also switched over some of my audio gear into another bag, uh, which I'll show you a photo of. Basically, I had everything sitting on a tripod before, and while it's great in the studio, moving outside and moving around, having two separate tripods, it just doesn't work. So here's a little bit on the Wired Up, MM as in multimedia, Wired Up from Think Tank Photo. I've actually had this bag for quite a while. They had sent it over and uh, used it a few times, but really liked this bag. Um, basically, this is the, new, the Tashcam VR60D, which is a field recorder and preamp and all. I think it's a preamp, I don't know, something like that. Basically, right now, this is what's doing the recording of my audio. Since I'm too far from the camera, I disconnected it, and I'm using this audio anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Um, so then I have my two audio packs here for actually doing the recording, and then there's another one in this pocket, and I'm able to put all basically all my gear in here. Um, I have this guy right here, which all of a sudden I can't remember the name. Hoodman is the is the name of the little their little loop that I use sometimes when I'm shooting some video. Uh, so I have that in that pocket. Of course, over here, we can hang our headphones so that we're, we can listen. And then on this side, I actually have my microphone in there, a handheld thick mic, which I showed you that I had. I actually ended up using it this weekend, which was nice. And then in this pocket, I can store my video mic from Rode, which is a nice mic. Uh, worked out really well when I was, again, using it this weekend. So this is my new audio rig that I can easily carry around, move around, do stuff with if I need to. Uh, and I even have a little bottle holder so I can put my water bottle in there and carry it around too. It zippers and closes and so you're not going to lose it. And so, yeah, that guy's there. If you do have a lot of gear in it, you can then tighten it and take some of the load off by putting it on your hips. Uh, putting a load on the hips is a good thing, so um, you can actually just strap it onto there. Or, of course, using the suspender style and keeping it low, it'll ride up higher if you want it to. Works out really well. The uh, Think Tank MM Wired Up Bag. Thanks again, guys, for saying it over a long time ago. Works out really well. I love this little bag especially now that I have the real audio gear to put in it. How can I be sure to shoot straight photos during a sporting event? I shoot a lot of soccer games and a lot of the time when editing the photos, I have to correct the horizon line because I end up tilting the camera slightly two to five degrees. Frederico, unfortunately, that really comes down to practice. Um, if you're shooting handheld, there's really no other way to, to do it except for practice and paying attention to what you're doing, looking at the horizon line, 
seeing where it's at as you're shooting, paying attention to what's, what's in the background, not just the action in the foreground. Uh, a lot of times what I tell people is start looking around all four edges of the photo when you're shooting. I know that's difficult when you're shooting sports, but it's, it's just gonna take some more practice for you. Uh, the other thing you can try is using a monopod. Um, if you use a monopod, you tend to notice when you start to tilt a little bit more because the, the whole rig starts to get a little bit heavier. So try using a monopod the whole time instead of just a tripod or instead of just handheld with a 70 to 200 lens or whatever it is, or maybe a 300. Try using that monopod that tends to, I think anyway, keep you a little bit more vertical and straighter and it works out well for me. I've noticed that a couple times when I was shooting soccer or other events, yeah, when you, when you start to turn, sometimes you do uh, fall off, just like what I was talking about with the video stuff, you, you, you tend to lean a little bit. So um, sometimes using that monopod can help. So try that out. Can I print directly from my Epson V600 scanner to an Epson printer like the 3880? I got an answer directly from Epson on this one and the answer unfortunately is no. You need to have some kind of software in between the two in order to print those. Um, my workflow personally, if I was gonna do something like this, is I would be scanning inside of Photoshop or some other application like that. Maybe there's a standalone software from Epson that you could scan with, and then I would pull them into Lightroom and I would print them directly out of Lightroom. I think that's going to end up being a better workflow anyway, because you still would probably want to be saving these images. Um, maybe you can set up the software to set up a hot folder uh, or with the auto import function inside of Lightroom. So as you scan the images, they automatically go into a single folder on your computer and then Lightroom will automatically import those into its catalog and then you can print that way. That might be a, an easy route, an easy way for you to go. Uh, but directly from Epson, there is currently no way to print directly from a scanner to a printer. Um, the only thing I can think of, it's even close, would be is if you just wanted like a photocopy of it. You know, you put a, a, an image on the glass or an image in the document um, feeder and it'll automatically process those and then basically like a copier would put a stack of photos in the in the document feeder basically making uh, low quality copies uh, but it, most likely for photography terms you're probably going to want to stay away from that because the scan is going to be low the quality isn't as going to be good on on a, a on a printer like that you know you want a higher quality final image so um, stick with the quality spend a little bit more time making the adjustments and see if that hot folder idea with the Lightroom's auto import will work. Two more things about gear today. Think Tank is letting you try out one of their shapeshifter bags for free. Uh, I'll put a link in the description and over on the blog post about it. If you ever wanted to try out one of their bags, right now is the time. You can actually send them an email or order. I forget exactly how it works. Basically, they're gonna send you one of these bags for free. And if you don't like it, you can then send it back. No charge, you just pay for the shipping back. It's a really good deal. I love the Shapeshifter bag. Um, I use it all the time if I'm traveling. Uh, it's funny, I go back and forth. So for like six months or eight months or whatever, I'll use uh, like a shoulder bag and I'll always be carrying a shoulder bag. And then I'll just kind of want to change up and want to do something different. And I go back to the shapeshifter. And so I just kind of go back and forth. Like um, people give me a hard time all the time on, you know, well, you're always changing your bags. Well, women can do it with their purses. Why can't a guy do it with their laptop bag? And so that's what I do. I switch it back and forth. And whatever I feel like carrying for a couple months, I'll put all of my laptop and stuff in there. And that's kind of my daily bag with my my kind of primary, you know, so I have a laptop and iPad and all that stuff in a bag. And then if I need, I can still throw a camera and all that stuff in. Um, great bag. Check that guy out if you did want to try one out. The other thing I wanted to talk about today was this new cross shot from Black Rapid. Love this strap. They finally came out with a strap that works really well, whether it's on a single shoulder or across your body. Amazingly enough, it's actually long enough for me to wear across the body. And I'm a big guy, and I put the extension on my RS7 
the Burt extension to make it a little bit bigger. Um, but this one with this molded rubber, it is super sticky and sh stays on your shoulder as you watch the whole t time during the show. I had it on my shoulder. It didn't move hardly at all. I was very surprised, very happy to see this strap. It's, it's a really awesome design. Um, again, you can wear it across your body or over your shoulder. Uh, I've showed it to a couple other photographers and they all seem to like it. It comes with their new locking device. Basically what this does is it, uh, when you turn this and lock it here, you're able to then flip up this up and completely lock that so it's not going anywhere um lock the little carabiner that's there so it works out really well of course it comes with the fastener which is the attachment for your um tripod mount but really nice little strap that's the cross shot and it's also less expensive it's only uh, about 45 dollars i'll put a link to amazon and also on thing or uh, sorry black rapids website to it you can pick one of those up um Nice new strap, cool device. They had promised us this new uh, product uh, not that long ago during my interview with them. If you did miss that, here is a link to that video interview that I did uh, with Black Rapid. So check out the new Black Rapid cross shot. I'm gonna give this to Kathy, let her try it out for a while, see what she thinks. I know she's addicted to her RS7. I don't know if she would want to switch or not. But um, I like it because, again, it can go on either shoulder or on just a single shoulder. And, again, for a while, I even had it just on, um, on one shoulder, and I was carrying it around. I used it during that video shoot. I actually had um, the D7000 um, as a backup video camera uh, hanging on this while I had this other big, huge video rig on me. And so it ended up working out pretty well, putting it on one shoulder and then, be, and then be able to shoot and still do my primary video on the other tripod. So um, yeah, worked out pretty well. I like the new Black Rapid cross shot. I think that's it for today. Hopefully we'll cross our fingers. We have Kathy back next week. Hopefully we'll also have a new assignment for next week. Keep your eyes open for that. We'll get that posted and going. Um, once again, thought I'd mention the photo here from Steven. I'm going to be sending those out. I think I've only received three out of the five winners photos to print. So if the other two want to have your photo printed, send them over so that I can get them printed and out in the mail for you. Thanks guys. Keep shooting. See you.